Good evening. Today I'm going to show you a few cool things you can do with CS Timer. So let's uh, open up CS Timer here and oh god, my eyes! Oh! Alright, number one is you go to options up here, you go to color, click this thing, click black or white or something, not the original one, Jesus! So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to install CS Timer on your computer or mobile device so that you can use it offline without an internet connection. So first on desktop, you're going to want to use uh, Google Chrome for this. I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, so yeah, you're going to go to cstimer.net and uh, you're going to go to the right side of the URL bar up here and you're going to see this little plus sign here and you can click on that. It's gonna ask if you want to install it. Click install. It'll open this window and it'll also create a desktop shortcut. Now, this is actually technically not a standalone program. It's actually a Google Chrome window without Chrome's UI elements, which is why you need Chrome to do this. Now, even though this is a Chrome window, it'll function without an internet connection, so it's pretty useful. Now for iOS. So on iOS, you're going to want to open Safari and um, you're going to go to cstimer.net and uh, you're going to click on this little share icon down here and scroll down until you see add to home screen. So you click on that, click add, and then it'll make a little app icon on your home screen just like this. And if you click on that, it'll open up CS Timer. Now again, this is actually just a Safari window with all the UI removed, but again, it'll work offline just like the desktop one. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is a tool called Common Scramble. To access this tool, you click this little uh, fader icon, I guess, and uh, you click on it, go down here to this uh, button right here, click on it, and you'll see a list of tools and there's a lot of really cool stuff in here that I might make a separate video on, but uh, in the meantime, you should check it all out. But right now, we're just gonna be looking at this one called Common Scramble. So if you click on it, you'll see this window talking about seeds. If you click on the Input Seed button, it'll bring up a dialog box, and you can type anything you want in here, like for example, the letter H, and that will become your scramble seed. And what that does is CS Timer will use whatever you put in there to generate your scrambles. So every time you use that phrase as your seed, you'll see the same scrambles. So you see I put the letter H in there, and the first scramble I see is U, D, L, you know what, let's just copy this and open a new tab and paste it up here. And then let's go to the next one and copy this one too and then paste it again to uh, sort of remember what they are. And then let's input a new seed like, um, I don't know, G, yes. And then uh, you'll see we get different scrambles. But then if we go back to H, we will see that uh, the first scramble we see is U, D, L, F prime, U, D, L, F prime. Next scramble is U2, F, D2, B. U2FD2B. So yeah, this is really useful if you want to cube with a friend and you want to get the same scrambles and see how you do. Kind of like a cubing comp or something. So for the next few things I'm going to show, I'm going to actually need some times in here. So um, let's just type some in. So in order to get into the typing mode in CS Timer, you go up to the little cog up here. You click on it, click timer, and then entering times with typing. And now you can type anything you want in here, like for example, uh, 3.47. And now I have a world record. And let's also put in my uh, actual PB, my uh, 10.08. But look at that. I didn't type a point anywhere in here, but when I press enter, it'll recognize that there's a decimal there. So that's actually one more thing I'm going to show you here. So, so you don't actually need to use the decimal when you're entering a time in typing mode. You can just type uh, 555 five, five, and it'll put a decimal before the last two digits. So for example, 10.01, it'll know the decimal goes here because these are the last two digits. It goes before those two. 
And it works with times bigger than a few seconds as well into the minutes. So let's do a time of a minute and a half and a half. So one minute, 30 seconds, and 50 milliseconds. It'll know to put the decimal here. And would you look at that? It did that. And now I've got a beautiful average of five of 8.55. So now after you've got a few solves in your timer, uh, something you might want to do is save them so you can access them from another device or, you know, what have you. So you can do that by clicking on this little, um, I don't know what any of these icons are, except that is yen, I guess, and that's a cube. So yeah, you click on this one up here and uh, you have a bunch of options. You can export it to your WCA account, you can export to your Google account, or you can export directly to CS Timer's servers. So let's do that because it's the easiest. So let's just call this re... Actually, no, I need to remember how many E's there are. So let's just call it real... Fi... Real Felix Zemdegs. And click export, uploaded successfully, all right. And now, if I close this and then open a new incognito window and uh... Oh God! And then click import from server and then type in, uh, oh God. Real Felix, Real Felix Zemdegs. It'll ask if you want to uh, import the thing. And there you go, there are the times I entered. Now let's say I've had a really bad session, like, really bad like I've been I don't know I accidentally left the timer running a whole bunch of times and I've got some really good solves but some really bad ones too and I just want to get rid of all of them you know so I go up here to import my last save but whoops I accidentally click export and oh no all of these are exported but everything is okay because I had this enabled. Actually, I didn't have it enabled, but now I do. <laughs> it's called import non-latest data. So what this does is when you click import from server, it'll ask you for a number and you can type in a number and that number will correspond to how... Son of a mother... So you can type in a number and that number will correspond to any previous file you've exported. So if you type in the number one, it'll just import the most recent save file. And if you type in the number two, it'll import the second most recent save file. So if I type in the number two and click OK, you see it deleted all those horrible, terrible times that I got and now everything's back to normal. So yeah, that's actually saved my ass a few times when I've accidentally exported something wrong or exported one session onto a different name or something or, or just messed something up in general. This can help fix it. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is the fact that you can have settings enabled per session. So there are these check boxes next to most of the settings in the settings menu. And if you check one of these, it'll make it so that that setting changes based on what session you are on. So for example, if I change the timer back to the timer mode and then go to display timer size and make this ridiculously big. And as you can see, I had the check box next to it checked. If I go to a different session, would you look at that? It's not an eyesore anymore. And that goes well with the next thing I'm going to show you, which is something that will help you practice and get better at cubing, actually. So this is actually useful. The other stuff I've shown here has debatable usability. This one is actually good and I highly recommend it. So if you go to timer, do this in a new session, by the way. If you go to timer and you see this little thing here that says multi-phase, set that to four if you use CFOP. So now in this session, when you start the timer and then you stop it, it works kind of like a stopwatch in that it saves each section of the timer. And it doesn't stop until you press the space bar four times, which is the number we entered in there. And four is good for CFOP, so you can time how long your cross takes, how long your F2L takes, how long your OLL takes, and how long your PLL takes. So this is really good for seeing what part of your solve you need to improve on and what you're good at. 
So four second cross, that's terrible. Two second F2L, that's ridiculously good. And uh, four second OLL, gotta work on that. Once one and a half second PLL, that's good. All right, so after that strangely disproportional solve, now we know we need to work on our cross. Our F2L is fine. Our OLL turn speed could be better, you know? So this is pretty useful for figuring out what you need to work on, what you're good at. So now let's jump back into my actual CS timer account. So these are my times. Hello, would you look at that? There's my 10.08 I mentioned earlier. So yeah, what I'm gonna show you in here is how to look at your stats and get a better idea of your improvement over time. So as you can see, this isn't the default thing here. Normally it'll say average of five and average of 12, but I have it set to say average of 100 here. See, normally, oh God. You see, normally it says average of five and average of 12, but on mine, it says average of five and average of 100. And the way I did that was went into my settings, statistics, and then these two list types here. You can have even set them to a mean, but I prefer to have it set to average of five and average of 100. And you can also change the times that show up here as well. So I have average of 100, average of 1000, but uh, go back to your settings, statistics, and you can change your statistical indicators here. So you can have it set to any of these preset ones here, or you can make your own, which is what I do. So you go here, type, AO69, and now you can see the average of my last 69 solves, which is 15.04, which is really not good for me. I've been having a bad day. And my favorite way to view my stats in CS Timer is the tool Time Trend here, and it'll give you a nice graph of your improvement over time. Now, the gray line corresponds to individual solves, and uh, the red line and the blue line correspond to whatever you have set here. So Mine is average of five and average of 100. So you can see my gradual improvement over time. I had a really big improvement spike over here. Maybe I got a new cube or something, I don't know. But you can see interesting things like that and you can look back and see, oh, I had a really bad time there. Yeah, so you can look at your improvement over time. See, when I first started this session, I was averaging around 40, 45 seconds. And now I've gone all the way down to sub 15. So yeah, those are some cool things you can do with CS Timer. I hope you learned something, or at least found this interesting. If not, if you already knew everything in this video, feel free to leave a comment telling me that I'm a piece of sh- But, if you don't want to do that, maybe leave a like and subscribe to help me get this channel off the ground since this is actually my first video on here. Also, if you like the music in the background, I made it. Links in the description. Anyways, thanks for watching till the end, and I'll see you in my next video.